Hi, Mariah Tanner here, uh, Director of Community Development at the Volunteer Center of Santa Cruz County and former triathlete coached by this fabulous woman, Heidi Boynton, but I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Who are you? I don't think you're a former, tri you can still be, okay. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> I am Heidi Boynton, and I am co-founder, executive director of Mini Mermaid Running Club. Among Finding Sophia. Yes. Yeah. Um, lots of lots of things. Lots of things. Yeah. Uh, an Iron Woman. Yes. A TEDx speaker. Yep. Yes, ma'am. A mother. Yes, ma'am. A daughter. Yes, ma'am. A best friend. Oh, yeah. A coach. Yep. All of the things, and oh. founder and executive director of a nonprofit. Because why not, right? I mean, <laughs> what the hey? So, Mini Mermaids Running Club. What does, I know what it means, but what does that tell me? What is that? I know, like, do mermaids run? Exactly. It's, it's forever, yes. it's been the question. Mini Mermaid Running Club is a journey for girls to go on with adult women in their lives, often teachers at their school, to help uncover the internal dialogue that we all live with. It's this idea that Minnie Mermaid lives right alongside Siren mm -hmm. and Minnie Mermaid represents our inherent strength, our courage, our determination, our resilience, all of the things that make up our incredible character. Mm -hmm. And then Siren represents the fear and the shame and the stories that have been developed because of life circumstance or our interpretations of the way people treat us or the things that have happened to us. And it's this pathway to understanding that we live with these two voices all the time. Mm -hmm. That when we're trying something new or we're doing something scary or we're trying to navigate a relationship that's challenging, mm -hmm. that our objective is to differentiate between those two voices. How can I listen for Minnie Mermaid's voice, my inner champion? How can I find her in the midst of that siren, inner critic, shame story, and claim that voice of strength and move forward in life? Mm. That's kind of, you know, okay. the everyday, you wake up. Who's in charge, mm -hmm. Minnie Mermaid or siren? 10 minutes later, wait, who's in charge? It's, I mean, <laughs> sorry to say. It's a process. It's a process. So it's, it's school-based. It's after school curriculum. It's a running club for girls. Um, but uh, underneath all of that, the foundation is tribe, right? Yeah, is, is about yeah. building tribes so girls can have access to um, these tools mm -hmm. that they can resource at any time throughout their lives. I have to say that I am 32. And I can't even imagine what I would be like today if I went through this program when I was in third grade. So thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you are not just in Santa Cruz. You have a global footprint. What is that like? It's been wild. Um, you know, we, we decided to use movement as a catalyst for this deeper conversation. Right. In my own life, understanding the relationship when I move my body, the things that come up, and how I can begin to chip away at those fear stories and move forward in bravery. And so as we grew and grew in Santa Cruz and then elsewhere, people were sort of saying, hey, we want this over here. And on, in another chapter of my life, I do a lot of work down in Mexico. And so we said, hey, I think these girls would love to learn about mini mermaids. And so we took it to the streets of Tijuana. And then somebody contacted us that has family in Guatemala and said, I see you're in Mexico. Can we do it in Guatemala at this safe house for women that have been rescued from terrible situations? I said, sure, let's give it a shot. And then another friend said, oh, my sister is in Baghdad and she saw that you have many mermaids globally. Mm. Can she do it in Baghdad? I said, of course, let's figure it out. And it's just grown like that step by step. Right. Another woman in the UK, her daughter has selective mutism and she was looking for something that could help bring out her courageous self. And she found us and said, can I do many mermaids here? And then Six months later, she said, can I just start Mini Mermaids across the UK? And I said, sure. And now she's going to Ireland. And then we're in Switzerland and France and now headed to Uganda and Rwanda. It's it's all accidentally awesome. Accident accidentally awesome. Yeah. Accidentally awesome. What, how, you know, it's so big and it's so beautiful and it's so much. What keeps you grounded and rooted? What keeps you at the center of doing this work without burnout? 
Well, that's the that's the nonprofit. I mean, anything, anything mm-hmm. that you're doing that's driven from that guttural space mm-hmm. can easily slip into that burnout. And it, in the last nine years, it has ebbed and flowed in, in all sorts of directions. I think what always tethers me back is something that my brother um, said to me one time. He said, what breaks your heart and then what breaks your heart open. Mm. And what that's taught me and what I hold so closely in those moments of like, on any given day, it could happen in and out a hundred times of overwhelm and isolation and is this ever gonna work and how am I gonna get the money and how are we gonna make it work in Baghdad and Uganda and UK and in San Diego. And I remember that it is true, the thing that breaks your heart the most that just rips you to shreds, has the capacity, if you choose, to break you wide open into the universe Mm -hmm. and into the work that keeps being driven by that brokenness. And so for me, it is my nine-year-old self Mm -hmm. that wondered, do I matter? Do I have a place in this world? Will Will I ever feel that sense of deep connectedness? Who is my tribe? Where do I fit in? What is this voice, this conflict that I hear? And stumbling and spending many, many years. And, you know, I'm 48 and I'm still like, dang, ah, I'm going to get it. Siren, <laughs> shut up. But, you know, it's, it's finding that moment of remembering that I'm driven because I know that feeling of being alone. I know what it's like to wonder what that would be like to be a part of of something and to to know your worth and value like you said if you'd if you'd had that when you were younger where mm-hmm. i mean you're doing pretty well but i get it <laughs> there is that question so for me it's really about coming back to the center of of where it all started from and it was that nine-year-old self it was talking to a woman on a track in her mid-40s that could barely put her feet onto a you know a 400 meter track she's pushing at her leggings and just so ashamed of her body and herself and couldn't do it. And I realized I wasn't talking to her very successful CEO, Silicon Valley self. Mm -hmm. I was talking to her nine-year-old self. So let's get to her sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's preventative. Yeah. So exciting news out of Mini Mermaid running club Mm -hmm. world Mm -hmm. is that you have been primarily focused on girls, on women. Mm -hmm. But what is... What has the last 18 months, two years, been like for you programming-wise? Like, what is that exciting news around Tritons? Yeah. So we, many years since the beginning, people have said, what about the boys? And as a mother of two boys. What about the boys? You know, I'm like, yeah, "Yeah, I know. But I'm doing this thing right now. So if you want to make a boys program, (laughs) have at it. Call me. But no (laughs) no one called me. Yeah. Um, Actually, until about three years ago, a family, just a really dear, amazing family in the community, their their daughter had been a mini mermaid. And they were like, our son, Gavin, he deserves to be a mini mermaid, too. Mm. And I was like, okay, way to just like. And so I said, okay, we can do it. Yeah, broken (laughs) again. Okay, we can do it, but we got to do this as a team. So we sat down and we wrote our first iteration of Young Tritons Running Club, which is probably by far the, the hardest thing I've done in my career with running this nonprofit because Mini Mermaids comes from my nine-year-old voice and the mm-hmm. curriculum is, is assembled with this team that, you know, well, you know, you've been there. You know, you're, you're telling your story and you're putting it out onto the table and to do something so different for boys it's not a traditional sports program. It's it's taking out competition. It's mm-hmm. taking about who's the taking out who's the winner, and it's saying what happens in my own heart and mind. And so we we spent three years rewriting the curriculum. The first one in Mini Mermaids, we wrote four separate curriculums in the same amount of time. Wow! So we had to rewrite and readapt. And so we've got our what we think is as good as we're going to get right now with our first one. And we're actually just starting the process of writing our second curriculum, and it's. The first one is really about being a part of a team and having compassion for yourself so you can have empathy for others. Mm. And then this one is about being a hero, that we need you to be your own hero so you can be a hero when we need you most. Amazing. Amazing, Heidi. I Mm. just adore you so much. Mm And um, I, you know, if if people want to get involved or if they want to coach or yeah. if they want to give or what, what's the best way to access you right on our website, website. right on our website, mini mermaid running club.org. Yeah. It's yeah. all there. 
Because you are volunteer based. Yep, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and you're mostly in schools that are like 75% reduced mm -hmm. lunch, yeah. right? Yep. But you're also in other tr more traditional schools, right? Yep. So what if someone wants to bring this program to their school or to easy their- Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yeah. Yep, just give me a shout and we'll make it happen. Yeah. From Baghdad to, right? And, and beyond, <laughs> from Baghdad to Bakersfield, <laughs> me for me to running club. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, and you want to see more, why don't you subscribe to our channel? We would really appreciate it. And also, make sure you turn on your notifications, because then if you do, you'll be the first one to actually see our video. And lastly, again, if you like the video, why don't you like the video? Okay, thank you very much.